Today, we're going to be checking out 10 everyday things Americans do that are very strange to Irish people. I'm going to have my UK perspective on this and see if they're weird to me or whatnot. Let's just check this out and see what you Americans are doing that is strange. So today, I wanted to look at 10 things that are like everyday... What? That's a good start, Diane. Okay, Diane. I want to look at 10 everyday <laughs> like things me. that are different in America than they are in Ireland. Right. Probably going to refine that title before I post this. Before I get into the video, I saw a comment recently asking what the thing was on the couch behind me. It's a killer koala, and if you, specifically you, the person who asked what that thing was, was a dog. behind me, does not subscribe, you will have your face eaten off by my killer koala. His name Wait, oh, is that actually a dog? His name is Chewy, and Chewy by name, Chewy by nature, so subscribe. <laughs> also, check out my social Oh, it's a dog, yeah. Social media, we have good time there. I'm trying to post more stories on Instagram, so there's that. Okay, so the first everyday thing that I had to learn worked differently in America is a big one, money. The attitude to money in America huh? and Ireland is super different. American people largely borrow money and rent things. Right. A lot of times I'd be seeing these amazing cars and then Lenny would turn around and be like, that person doesn't own that car, they're renting it or renting to buy. Oh, it's not even houses like cars and stuff as well. Wait, is this a normal thing with Americans? You guys rent a lot of cars? Or you guys prefer to say leasing the car? In Ireland, you definitely buy your car outright. Recently, I right. was talking about how if ever I got a car, I might consider renting to buy it. Everybody said that I was completely crazy because the car would end up costing more in the long run. You're crazy. True. It just isn't the norm here. It's not what people do. I've you know what? I do know some people in the UK that actually does like rent it. And what they do, they pay like a certain amount every month. But what's really good is every couple years, you can literally upgrade your car, which I actually might do at some point because cars do depreciate a lot in value. So it makes sense. Also noticed that I guess because America is such a huge country, big amounts of money just seem to just not make people go, oh. on Dr. Phil, a lot of times you have people who've been catfished and I know those are extreme examples, but they'll be like, oh, I sent a million dollars over huh? to this Nigerian prince. And everyone's like, wow, tough break, a million dollars. And I'm like, a million dollars? Wait, everyone right now in the comment section down below, tell me what you class as a large amount of money. I would say personally, a large amount of money. Like if you had this in a bank, I'd be like, wow. I'd probably say 50, 100 grand. I would say if you had that in the bank, I'd be like, wow, you got a lot of money. <laughs> Me saying that out loud right now, I'm like, I, I already know you guys are going to be like, that's nothing. <laughs> but if I had 50K or 100K in the bank, I'd be like, wow, I got a lot of money. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And obviously to the regular American, a million dollars is a lot of money, but it just didn't have the Oh my God. element that I thought a million dollars Oh, have. a million dollars is so in much. the aspect of the size of the country, a couple of million isn't a lot of money to you guys. No, the there's no was way. He about the coronavirus the other day, and he was saying that they've set aside three billion provisionally to deal with this situation. And I'm like, Holy moly, that's a lot of money. But I can only well, yeah, three billion is crazy. Only imagine how much it's going to cost America. Also, American people use checks and Irish people like never use checks. Yeah, like, we the don't. Last time I was given a check in payment was about 10 years ago. And I was like, that's yeah, unusual. <laughs> so it was unusual like a decade ago. And like now nobody gives checks. I think people in Ireland don't trust checks whereas checks are. Yeah. Che checks is a no-go in the uk anymore like it was a while back but like yeah you guys still using it today i wonder why i wonder why checks is still like a, a main thing in america very common in the states also you guys use paypal there like you could go into a business and you'd be like do you mind if i paypal it to you and oh that's sick like, okay no problem which doesn't really happen here also you guys don't use oh i like that because I pay power all the time and there's been so many times I've gone to the shop and I've actually forgot my card. And I was I was there like, oh, I wish I could just like PayPal you or just send it you on my phone or whatnot. And yeah, nah, you can't. If I said to someone, can I PayPal you? They'd be like, wait, wait what? <laughs> it, no, bro. You cash so much. You pretty much all use cards, which actually in the last week with this whole social distancing thing has become a lot more common here. All the tap, tap your cards everywhere. Oh yeah, we uh, tap. Yeah, I tap that. So maybe cash is going to become redundant everywhere. But in Ireland, up until very recently, we used cash like 
about as much as we use cards. Oh, so, yeah, wow. I find it pretty fascinating. Yeah, not many people in the UK use uh, cash anymore. Uh, mainly cards. Stating how just the attitude to how we use money is different. The next thing that's different in America is you don't see regular everyday people just going around on bicycles. Okay, I'm gonna say in small towns you would see it a lot more, but here in Ireland, even in the big cities, people go around on bicycles all the time. But not exclusively in the cities, also in the suburbs, also right. in the countryside, just everywhere in Ireland, wherever you go, you'll see people on bicycles. Oh wow, yeah, in the UK you don't really see too many people on bikes um you might see the odd few here and there and like there is definitely people or quite a few people that will bike but nah i don't really see them not every day whereas in america it's definitely more depending on where exactly you are and another reason for this i think is because you guys have way bigger roads so i can imagine it's a lot scarier going on those bigger roads on <laughs> True. bicycles also True. i'm not sure what the legalities of going on all those roads is i know you can't go on a motorway on a bicycle here and your cars are absolutely huge especially in wait you bro ain't no way you'd be able to go on a motorway with a bike is that possible with any country I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. You imagine going on a motorway on the bike. Yeah. Texas. Check it's out so my belt dangerous. buckle. It says everything's bigger in Texas. And like every single person's car true? was mahusive. I was just like, what? All the cars are huge. So if you're on a bicycle, it would be pretty intimidating, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a bicycle person, but a lot of my friends are. So I don't know how they would really get around in America. I guess they'd all just have to ride cars. Much like people don't really walk places What, they in only buy? I guess they also don't bike so much. I have friends like that actually who will get in their car just to go five minutes walk away. But generally, people in Ireland are good for bikes and walking places. The Wait, how would they go to McDonald's drive through then? Would they bike and go the drive through on the bike? How would they do that? Would they just park the bike and go in? Oh, that's long. That's long. If, if I was biking everywhere, I'd definitely go through the drive through on my bike, but I don't even know if you're allowed. <laughs> one and we all know that measurements are different in ireland and in america right. but the ones that really stuck with me was how differently you measure months and dates we'd say mm. the 20th of march so the 20th of the third 2020 and you'd say march 20th so then you'd say the third 20 yeah 2020 it's just a different way of doing it i actually don't know that one's better than the other but i do know that when i'm trying to organize my accounts which is horrendous at right. the best of times that it's really confusing when i'm going through my receipts i ain't gonna lie i'm gonna say it right now right listen listen it doesn't matter like it's not the end of the world right but it makes more sense to go small to big or big to small so either day month year or year month day you guys have just jumbled it month wait month day year <laughs> Bro, well, listen, when I come to America, I'm going to get so confused by the dates. To be fair, I don't really look at dates anyway. Uh, I don't even know what the date is today. I ain't going to lie. I have no clue what the date is. Because now I've done so much traveling to America. I'm like, is that the month or the day? Also, I mean, we use 24 hour clock here, whereas you guys don't, but what? your army does. 14 huh? hours today. But we don't say it. So if it's two o'clock in the afternoon, we'll go, it's two o'clock. Wait, you lot don't use 24 hour clock? America's like... Huh? But we might write down 1400. But in America, people in the army would say 014. Oh, Wait, so on your phones, if it's saying 8 o'clock at night, what would it say? Would it say 20 dot dot zero zero or would it say 8 dot dot zero zero? Yo, what if you sleep in and you wake up and you don't know if it's morning or night? 100 hours or 1400 hours or something like that correct me in the comments i've never been in the american army surprising that the next thing <laughs> that i've noticed in america is that a lot of places people don't lock their door and i'm not referring necessarily to cities here i was talking to people at one of the meet and greets and they were talking about how they come from a town where you don't even lock your door and oh, you wow. think this one would be the other way around you think in ireland that people don't lock their door everywhere but no not so in ireland Everybody locks their door. Yeah, in the, the UK, stuff. same. But in America, it seems to be like a source of pride if you live in a place where you don't need to lock the door and people just go in and out your door. Now, I get that doesn't apply yeah. to everybody, but it seems to definitely be a thing that happens, which just... No, no, no. I'm locking my door. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, there's no way. Like, imagine I was, like, recording this right now and some person just walks in. Like, bro, what? Like, huh? 
<laughs> in no way. Bro, I will crap myself, man. I'd be so scared. It doesn't exist here. Also, I noticed that any of the Airbnbs that I've stayed in have not got alarms. Whereas in Ireland, like a lot of houses and apartments have alarms. And again, alarms in what? New York City, there'd definitely be an alarm, but there just isn't. And what? That's when like a house alarm? So like breaking alarm? In the UK, we don't have breaking alarms. Like you, you definitely would be able to get it set up privately, but no, we don't have breaking alarms. Those everyday things that I was really, really surprised about. I'm shocked. I guess it indicates a level of trust in your community, but still nonetheless, like bad things can happen anywhere. So I'd be inclined to always lock my door, but let me know below in the comments if you don't lock your door. Oh, I'm definitely locking so my door. Why it's okay where you're at. The next everyday thing that I noticed is again, probably down to the size of America in comparison to Ireland. And it's that dress codes are not as strict over there. Huh? And even when there isn't a dress code in place, clothing wise, it's pretty much anything goes. Now, don't get me wrong. In Ireland, I've heard this. in Downton Abbey, you don't have to wear your shirt and tails everywhere you go. Although I probably wouldn't wear a shirt. And tails. Yeah, I've heard this. So like in America, right? You guys can go to like the shop in your PJs and stuff. Like you obviously can do that in the UK. And I guarantee you people do. But in the UK, I've never seen the situation and been involved in the situation. But let's say I went to the shop in my pajamas. I'm probably going to get some weird looks. And in America, I've heard they won't care. They're not bothered. They, nothing will be different, Tales, which is cool. I could if I wanted to because feminism. Arr. But yeah, this is something that me and producer Lenny noticed when we were over in America, especially with regard to bars and pubs and stuff. A lot of times in Ireland, you will not be let in if you're wearing runners or trainers. Oh, wait, yeah, same. Whereas in America, they're very much like, you're wearing your hoodie and your jeans, come on in. I get that they're- Oh, you know what? That's actually annoying. In the UK, there's like a really nice steak place um, called Miller and Carr. And it really annoyed me because I went the other week and I wasn't allowed to take my hat. I wasn't allowed to wear my hat. I went there before and they said I gotta take off my hat. I, I can't take a hat to eat food. Is that crazy or is that... <laughs> like, it's not like a really, really posh place. Like, you don't have to go there in suits. I was wearing a t-shirt. I was wearing uh, trousers. Boom. Right? I wasn't allowed a hat. Like, come on, man. I literally went bold for my Twitch. I need to wear a hat. <laughs> there are probably fancy places where dress code does apply, but in general, it just seems way more whatever you feel like. Also, you'll find I people like wearing that. their best cocktail dress in a restaurant, and then like two tables down, you'll see somebody in a hoodie and jeans. I think because Ireland is a bit smaller, we're all a bit more conscious, so you definitely do the what are you wearing right. before you go out somewhere or right. if I'm going to a restaurant I might check out on Instagram what the kind of general attire is before I go there and yep. it's not a super strict thing but it just seems to be a thing that just doesn't happen so much in America you can't wear stuff like that at church man there are definitely places that are fancier than others and that would have a doorman and stuff but I'm talking about the general everyday kind of places yeah now I think about it UK is actually pretty strict on like your dress code it actually really is now that I think about it, it is. There just doesn't seem to be bars and stuff, code. definitely. The next thing that I noticed in America is actually something that makes me really happy, and I wish we had a little bit more of it here. We've already talked about on this channel how people in the service industry tend to be really smiley and really nice, and there's been some debate over whether they do that tips. just for tips or whether they're just inclined to be nicer. And one thing that makes me think that they just kind of are that way in a way is that they're kind of prepared to do things that are outside of the box right so if you have a special request or something a waiter or a waitress will be like yeah no problem whereas in ireland you know what i've been speaking to americas now like a lot for like the past two months and from my experience you guys are way nicer than a typical brit because like just the way you guys talk and like you guys are in my Instagram DMs. Show me what you eat. Show me around your workplace. Like, even even you showing me around your workplace is crazy enough because in the UK, you won't be able to do that. Like, for example, if I was talking to someone in the UK, and I was like, oh, show me around your workplace, right? They'll be like, oh, I can't bother. Or they're not allowed. Or this or that, right? But in America, there's somebody that's literally recording. There's customers there. There's uh, the managers there, the staff there. They're recording and showing me everywhere in the workplace. So I can like see uh, see what America like bar looks like uh, better. 
and it's just yeah it's just better you know what i mean like just talking to them they seem nicer uh more friendlier more open so yeah it's cool they kind of can not always but they can look at you a bit. oh that that also means whilst i'm on the topic is if you want to show me whatever in america it could be anything just teach me more about it my socials are right there twitter instagram you can message me on instagram whenever you want i have been replying to a lot of you i try and get to all, all um to all of my messages but yeah it's really cool it's really cool i, I like seeing what you guys are, are doing over there because you got you all have different stories and all like every state's like a different country so yeah go to my instagram show me pictures and stuff bit like that's a strange request. I'll go check if I'm allowed to do that. So for example, you see a lot more people asking for the sauce on the side or can I get that without onions? And they're just like, yeah, sure, no problem. Whereas here they're like, I have to go check if that's okay. Why are you making this so difficult? <laughs> Which isn't a problem. That's it's just same in the UK. Here. Also outside of restaurants, I've seen that be the case as well. On one of the trips, I had left something in one of the rental cars and we didn't realize until I'd gone past security in the airport that it was in the car. And for whatever reason, the car rental service would just not being helpful in this case but i ended up calling this parcel delivery place yeah in the uk you leave your anything in a taxi or whatever you're not getting it back it's gone you are never getting that thing back ever <laughs> he went and checked in the car got it out of the glove box and ended up posting it over to a friend no of way and it actually didn't take a lot of explaining for me to get them to do that they were just like okay whereas in ireland i find if you request like that they're just like what that's no that's yeah if you do that in the uk you're not getting it back you're just not listen if i ever leave somewhere in like a taxi or whatever right and i've left it and i've got out the car or whatever i've got out of and it's gone even if i realize a minute and it's still driving down the road it's gone it's gone forever the thing we do we deliver parcels that's what we do and usually you actually will be able to talk an irish person around but special requests are like very special whereas i guess maybe because there's a higher turnover of customers they'd be used to unusual requests in america right. i don't know if i'm explaining that one too well let me know if i have the next thing is one i've mentioned before but i don't know if i put enough emphasis on it in america pets are very much accepted in just general society in ireland people huh? love their pets they're mad about their pets but it's very much you leave your pet in your house when you go out i huh? am very unusual with my pet unusual slash a bit of a freak you shit it because i bring my dog everywhere in his bag and usually i have to do it undercover because dogs are not allowed to go anywhere pretty much in ireland yeah i kind of see it it's kind of 50 50 in the uk like pets do go everywhere but there is places where you can't take in pets so what she's probably saying is like in america you can take your pet anywhere in america you can bring them to malls and there's even like yeah you areas for them to go uh you definitely can't do that in the uk you can't take pets into shopping centers you can bring them on airplanes you guys have a thing called an emotional support animal and a lot of people seem to have their animal classified that way and i think if i was in america i definitely would have my dog classified that way because that's what he is sometimes i get really anxious if he's not around but in ireland it's just not really so much a thing an emotional support animal right now the idea of an emotional support animal does exist here but it's very much a sure that's your emotional support animal <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. give you any rights to bring him anywhere but you can call him an emotional support animal if you want you can't bring an emotional support animal on an airplane a lot of people have said to me why don't you bring chewy on an airplane because you're not allowed you have to go through a lot of hoops to bring yeah. a cabin on an airplane and it's pretty much 99.999 percent not going to happen i've recently been looking into whether he could go on an american airlines flight as an emotional support animal but uh that's kind of been put on hold because nobody's going anywhere right now you can't leave if you're watching this in the future it's 2020 and we're all in coronavirus lockdown <laughs> oh wait this video is showing like that okay hope you came through that the other side okay in the future but yeah in ireland people love their pets but they're very much like put in a category of pets they just stay home or right they go for walks uk is kind of 50 50 with that kind of stuff going out and about life the next thing that's strange in everyday life in america is that school children don't wear school uniforms unless they're in like a fancy school oh wrong yeah not, not exclusively oh you guys are just so lucky man you guys are actually lucky bro school uniforms were the worst and we had to wear them all the way until we finished school all the way throughout we had to have like it, it got even worse by the time i left 
because the years below me has to start wearing like full on blazers even in the heat and they can't take it off. But yeah, you have to wear a shirt, tie. Oh, it's horrible. Fancy schools, but that's horrible. what I've been led to believe. So in Ireland, the standard is that you will wear a school uniform going through all the years of school. And actually, this is one I even appreciated when I was a kid because I didn't have to think about what I was going to wear to school every day. I just I had like two jumpers and two skirts and two shirts. Actually, you probably had more shirts. I've never seen so many shirts. But there was Yeah, I can't lie. I was a bit of a tramp. <laughs> I already had. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I only had one trousers, one shirt, and one tie. And I'd wash them every week, once a week. <laughs> that choice there. Now, you did Man, I'm disgusted. Though, because, you know, especially teenagers, they're like, I want to express myself. But if you went too far, like, a teacher would pull you aside and say, like, you can't wear that. That's not part of the uniform. It also kind of took away a little element of... Do you know what's crazy, actually? Why it's wearing uniforms? Listen, this is crazy. If your shirt wasn't tucked in, you'll get told off. If your tie wasn't up to the neck, you'd get told off. You'd pretty much, yeah, like, it's mad. It was so strict. Competitiveness, I think, and that was good, especially when you're a teenager and people are so inclined and susceptible to being bullied. It just took away something that you could be bullied about. When I was mm. in kindergarten, which is like junior, senior, infants, age five and six, we did wear our normal clothes, but we wore a smock over it. So again- You know what, I actually see, there is that is that's probably the only good point for school uniform the only good point is the fact like kids will get bullied less let's say you was a kid and you couldn't really afford like clothes or whatnot or like a lot of clothes yeah wearing a uniform kind of you know everyone's wearing the same if you look different to that person whatnot you know how kids bully and stuff so that's the only good point of wearing a school uniform always is it's going to take away the uh take away like the bullying part for like what you're wearing and stuff so it was a great leveler and also little kids get to not ruin their clothes and their parents can just bundle their smock in the washing machine in fifth and sixth year which are the final two years in irish school my school let you wear whatever you wanted because they actually felt like they were trying to prepare you for college and the right. world like you'd be able to decide for yourself and the ironic thing about that was we all ended up wearing pretty much the same thing anyway there were girls what, is the school in all girls school who used to wear heels and mini skirts to school and honestly we all just looked at them like what are you doing i mean <laughs> that sounds bad but whatever for the most part, pretty much everybody wore their tracksuit bottoms and a hoodie and a t-shirt. Right. The everyday thing that is different in America is how you do floors. Like, they're totally different and it's confusing from a brain head. So, in mean? America, if somebody says that my room is on the third floor, it means it's two floors up from the reception because the ground floor is just one and then the next floor is two and then okay. the third floor is three. So right. we don't go ground one, two, it goes one, two, three. Whereas in Ireland, the ground floor is just called the ground floor. Well, I'm sure it would be numbered right. And then one floor up is floor one and then the next floor is floor two and the next floor is floor three. So you're actually right. four floors up, but it's the third floor, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Again, it's just a different way of doing things. No one is right or wrong. It's just something that took a little getting used to. Especially in elevators. One time I got stuck in an elevator because I was so confused about where exactly I was going. <laughs> I just went up and down for like a good 10 minutes. So that's probably a me thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not generally to do with floors. And the number one everyday thing that I noticed is- How to spot a Brit in America. Right, just look at the hotel elevator and if it's just constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, boom, there they are. There's a huge difference over there is how you guys handle temperature and air. And again, this is oh, one I've AC mentioned units. before, but I don't know that I put enough emphasis on it. Oh. In Ireland, people have central heating. We will have radiators and stuff like that around Same. the house, but we don't have anything for cooling. Well, Same. we have windows. And the temperatures that Ireland kind of goes to means they're usually sufficient, although we will still complain of being roasting in the summer and freezing in the winter but that's just how we describe temperature stop being dramatic i have family over in spain and the way that they honestly you americans probably think that we're just so dramatic right but listen when it's really hot in the uk our houses are built for the winter with insulation and everything right it just traps heat so when it's hot outside even if you open a window 
it is just roasting sweating no ac no nothing you're just dying right well you're not literally dying but you know what i mean it's horrible oh i want an ac so bad i'm gonna get one in my new house handle temperature is that they have air conditioning but their heating system of the house is not so good at all so kind of like an opposite there whereas in america they all just kind of go we can control temperature and air because we are americans i'm jealous fair enough in America, you guys have really good air conditioning systems and really good heating systems equally. And I guess that's to do with the massive fluctuation in temperature that you have there. Also, humidity is a big thing. I yeah, to be fair, America gets way hotter than the UK. So if you guys didn't have those options in the AC, you guys would literally burn inside. So yeah, I see why you guys have it over us but we also need them as well now. You kind of see how opening a window just wouldn't work in the massive heat of some states. You guys' attitude to temperature and air is basically to shut the room off and then control it with devices. So, One of my so patrons good. sent me this Dyson heater so cooler thing and honest to God, it changed my life. And when my friends come over, they're just like, what the hell is that? It's not that it doesn't exist here. People do have air Oh wait, is she on about the thing that I'm thinking of? I've been told to get this. I don't know if it's actually good, but Dyson has like, it, it looks like a clip kind of. It's just like a big circle, uh, like a stretched out circle. Um, and it's put, man, it's like a fan, but it's really cold. Conditioning units just, it's not common. I did get a little slagging over if they were just like open a window down. But you know what? I actually love my Dyson thing. It's great. Oh, shut up! What I did find strange in America is that when I'm walking around outside and then I go into a store, the temperature in the store is completely different than when oh, I've heard walking this. around outside. And I don't know how American people handle that. Maybe you guys bring your jackets everywhere, but I would be walking around outside fine, grand. I've heard this. Like Americans would be walking in the street and it's like boiling. They got a t-shirt on and then they go inside the shop and it's freezing. <laughs> So what do you do? Do you just are you just like immune to it now? Are you just used to it or temperature and then I'd go into a supermarket and I'd be freezing, like absolutely freezing. Always with the drama. And nobody else looked freezing. You know what? To be fair though, when it's really hot, going somewhere freezing, even though it's freezing, it's really nice because it's cooling you off. And then you go back outside and it's really hot again. And then you go inside and it's cooling you off. It's only really bad if you stay indoors in a t-shirt for ages. And you just like you gone past the cooling off part and you just freeze enough freezing and they were all in t-shirts as well so maybe you guys are just super used to it but let me know below in comments what you think of the whole air thing they and like it for today's video I they like it the members that was a really good video enjoyed that let me know what you guys think in the comment section if you guys enjoyed make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe for more content i'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash if you guys want to check me out over there i'll see you all in the next one peace